Recording in progress. Okay, we'll call to order the Committee of the Whole meeting for Tuesday, March 22nd. Um, first item on the agenda tonight is roll call. Miller? Here. Rosado? Here. Beck? Connolly? Here. Jansen? Sofa? Here. Wolf? Here. Baron? Here. Lehman? Here. Ayazi? Here. Malay? Here. Ewer? Here. Cerrone? And Vocal Singer? Here. We have 11 out of 14. Okay. Thank you. Um, up next is a reminder to please speak directly into the microphone. And if you're online, make sure you're muted unless you are talking. Um, item three is approval of minutes for January 25th, 22. Do you have any comments or corrections or anything on the minutes? If not, can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Motion by Sulfa, second by Ewer. Roll call, please. Sulfa? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Baron? Aye. Lehman? Aye. Ayazi? Aye. Lane? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Cerrone? Vogel Singer? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Connolly? Aye. And Chancet? Motion carried 11 to 0. Okay, thank you. Um, items to be removed, added, or changed this evening. Do we have anything? We do not. Okay. Um, matters from the public. Do we have anybody from the public? Either online? Everything else covered in here? Um, is there any member of the public who would like to speak on matters which are not on the agenda? No one has their hand raised. Okay. And then we move on to item number six, which is the first of several on uh, the Winding Creek subdivision. This is resolution 22-38, uh, final plat of Winding Creek subdivision um, phase, um, Pulte Homes applicant. And that is Joel. Uh, yes, uh, if you would prefer, I can run through all four of these items. They all pertain to Winding Creek, that's if fine. that would be preferable. Yeah, that'd be fine, and then we can just go okay. back through and, and highlight each one of them as we pass or vote on the resolution. Okay. Thank you. Okay, well, uh, just for reference, there are four resolutions on the agenda tonight for Winding Creek. These will essentially finalize the entitlement approvals. For Winding Creek, um, the uh, uh, in October the City Council approved the annexation agreement and plan development uh, with the underlying zoning for Winding Creek. Um, as I said, approvals this evening will finalize the entitlement and will allow Pulte to move forward with closing on the property. Uh, that, per terms of the annexation agreement, would trigger. Uh, the actual annexation of the property. Resolution 22-38-R is for the final plat of subdivision for phase one. And phase one is for the south 100 residential lots. Resol res uh, resolution 22-039-R will dedicate uh, uh, right of way for Rans Branson Drive uh, to cross the city property that contains the creek. And then Branson Road, uh, when built, would connect to the existing Branson terminus to the northwest. Again, this was spelled out in the annexation agreement to make that creek crossing and connection. Resolution 22-040-R creates easements for Pulte to construct and for Pulte to maintain the portion of the bike path that extends onto the McKee tributary property to the west of Winding Creek. And again, this is also through the annexation agreement. And finally, resolution 22-041-R 
is the easement to use the city's McKee tributary property to provide some of Winding Creek's stormwater detention capacity. And again, this was spelled out in the annexation agreement. Uh, the resolutions have been written uh, this evening um, for your consideration. The plan commission did review the final plat. Uh, the plan commission does need to review and recommend final plats, and they did recommend approval uh, uh, last month. So with that, staff recommends approval of the four resolutions in front of you this evening as presented. Thank you, Joel. Does anybody have any comments or any questions on this? I know we've been working on this one for quite a while. I'm just happy to see we're getting close to breaking ground. Okay, if nobody has any comments or questions, I will make the motion that we recommend to council resolution 22-38, the final plat of Winding Creek subdivision phase one, Pulte Home Corporation applicant. Second. Motion by Wolf, second by Sulfa. Roll call, please. Wolf? Aye. Baron? Aye. Lehman? Aye. Ayazi? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Cerrone? Vogelsinger? Aye. Miller? Aye. Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Connolly? Aye. Chanzen? And Sulfa? Aye. Motion carried 11 to 0. All right, thank you. Um, next would be resolution 22-039R, plat of dedication for Branson Drive, crossing the McKee tributary for the Winding Creek subdivision, phase one, Pulte Home Corporation applicant. Um, I'll make the motion that we approve or move on to the city council with positive re recommendation, resolution 22-39R. Second. Motion by Wolf, second by Sulfa. <clears throat> Roll call, please. Wolf? Aye. Baron? Aye. Neiman? Aye. Ayazi? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Cerrone? Vogelsinger? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Connolly? Aye. Chanson? And Sulfa? Aye. Motion carried 11 to 0. All right, thank you. Um, up next would be uh, Resolution 22-041R, um, authorizing execution of stormwater detention. Oh. The right one, no. 040, plat of easement for the bike path, sanitary sewer, and McKee tributary property for Winding Creek subdivision, Pulte Home Corporation applicant. Make that motion. Second. Motion by Wolf, second by Sulfa. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Wolf? Aye. Baron? Aye. Lehman? Aye. Ayazi? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Cerrone? Vogelsinger? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Connolly? Aye. Chanson? And Silva? Aye. Motion carried 11 to 0. All right. Next is item number nine, which is resolution 22-041, authorizing execution of stormwater re, uh, detention easement agreement with Pulte Home Corporation, use of the McKee tributary property for Winding Creek subdivision, Pulte Homes Com Corporation applicant. Um, I'll make the motion that uh, we recommend a council resolution 22-041-R. Second. Motion by Wolf, second by Sulfa. <clears throat> Roll call. Wolf? Aye. Baron? Aye. Damon? Aye. Ayazi? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Cerrone? Vogelsinger? Aye. Miller? Aye. Mazzato? Aye. 
Beth? Connolly? Aye. Chanson? And Silva? Aye. Motion carried 11 to 0. All right, thank you. We're all set. Uh, we'll go through on our next city council meeting. We'll have that up for approval. All right, thank you. All right, then moving on to item number 10, resolution 22-37-R, um, authorizing supplement number one for engineering services for the Prairie Street and Wilson Street intersection improvement project with Trans Systems Corporation. Yeah. Alderman Rosado? I'll take this. Uh, phase, this is phase two design agreement with the city's engineering consultant, Trans System Corporation. It just needs to be appended to accommodate changes to the scope of work with regards to additional right of way, what is needed from the Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railway. Rahada, I'll let you explain the rest. Uh, so uh, we, we have an existing contract with Trans System Corporation and they are providing um, right of way and temporary easement services for the city as part of their design services. Uh, during the design, uh, we have to um, make sure that we have right of way and easement um, for all the properties that we need access to. Um, during doing our research, we found out that the existing Prairie Street and the railroad crossing, we do not have any right of way agreement with, uh, with the railroads. Um, long time back when Prairie Street came into place, I guess, you know, there was a handshake or something happened or the document got lost somewhere, you know, many, many things. So we have to, uh, we did not consider that we'll find this, but because it's a federally funded project, so everything is uh, gonna go through IDOT process. IDOT looks at all the documents. They make sure that we have the rights to get into other people's property. So, so we have to get easement from um, the railroad because this was not anticipated, so it was not part of the project's scope for the consultant. So they are, now they have to go and survey it, you know, do right of a negotiation with the railroad, you know, do all other things. So they are coming back to um, ask for a supplement. And also between railroad and ICC, they kind of back go went back and forth of the sidewalk alignment, how the sidewalk is going to come and meet with the railroad. Is it going to be at 90 degree or 60 degree, 45, you know, going to go parallel. So there was a little bit of back and forth that extra time. So it's all together. It's a $49,000 change order for their contract. So we anticipated this. Uh, we kind of knew this in 2021 during the budget process. So we, so we um, budgeted $75,000, I believe, um, $74,000, just an estimate, but they came with a $49,828 change order. So there's a kind of savings of about $24,000 from the budgeted amount. Rahat, are we still on, is our time frame still working out? Everything going as scheduled? How, how much will this delay? That's an interesting question. <laughs> We have uh, recently submitted uh, ICC petition um, to ICC and BNSF. Um, I have never done a project where both ICC and BNSF and railroad, um, so I'm finding out that they're pretty interesting entities, both of them. So ICC wants something, BNSF wants something. So we went you know, that back and forth quite a bit and finally we forced it. We said, let's go in front of a judge and let the judge deal with it. Um, so we submitted the paperwork about two, three weeks ago, and BNSF has uh, indicated that because of the skew and double crossing on both Prairie and Wilson, they will need uh, some time to review all that data. Again, we, they have seen the data, but you know, they're saying they're gonna. So I have very recently, actually, I sent it to um, our attorney, Kevin Drendel, because he's now like our representative because he filed the ICC petition that we are telling them that we have to go in January of 2023 to meet the federal funding, you know. Um, we have a little bit of cushion. March is the really the, the deadline. 
I'll take a step back. So this funding came from what we call is a pool funding. So this funding was with City of Chicago. City of Chicago could not get their project to go to construction, so CMAP took the money from them. Not only this money, there was a pool of money, and then they gave it to us, saying, you are ready to go, so you go with the project. So we have a deadline. If we don't go into construction, then we will lose the money, because they will take it from us. So we are, March is kind of our deadline. I hope ICC is not hearing, but, um, <coughs> the, but we are telling them that January is our target. We are targeting January, and then BNSF, after the ruling, I have heard, and I don't know, but we have heard that they take 90 days from the judgment to their plan preparation. So that's three months. So we kind of backtrack, like, okay, January, then, you know, then IDOT has to actually get the plans by October. So then you backtrack three months. So we, we are telling the judge, judge is giving us a date of June 1st to come to the table and talk about it. I'm like, okay, that's fine, but we need to have a judgment by July 15th. If we don't get it by July 15th, then we will be missing that Jan January deadline. Right. So we are kind of trying to you know, work all this in. I mean, it seems like so far away, but because um, IDOT has their deadline when they want it, and, and you, you are seeing it that it has ICC funding, which is the Illinois Commerce Commission funding, but that funding flows through IDOT. So IDOT not only overseeing the federal funding, they're also overseeing the ICC funding. So they're kind of gonna drive the bus as far as deadline and all that concern. So we are, we are working it out. I'm, short, short answer is we are, we are still targeting that you know, and working towards that. Right. Sorry, you gave a long explanation. No, but. That sounds good. Any discussion? <laughs> As long as we can keep the thing yeah. moving. So yeah, yeah, it's just thing. real important. We keep this moving and we get this done. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we have a weekly meeting with the consultant, make sure that things are moving. Um, as soon as um, ICC sends us a reply, we try to make the plans adjustment and, and get it back to them. Uh, but it's it just uh, different entities and they're very different, both ICC and BNSF. Yeah, a lot of different organizations. Different organizations. Okay. If there's no further discussion, <clears throat> I'll make a motion to move to City Council Resolution 2237R, authorizing Supplement 1 for engineering services for the Prairie Street and Wilson Street intersection improvements project with Trans Systems Corporation, the amount of $49,828. Second. Motion by Rosado, second by Miller. Roll call. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Connolly? Aye. Chanson? Sofa? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Barron? Aye. Lehman? Aye. Ayazi? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Cerrone? Vogelsinger? Aye. Ann Miller? Aye. Motion carried 11 to 0. Thank you. Okay, um, up next is item number 11, resolution 22-42-R, uh, authorization to purchase a drone from Siler Design Solutions. Yes we, have, yes, we have talked about this. We heard Gary talking about it a couple of years ago, and I'm glad we're co it's coming to fruition. Uh, this is going to be divided between three departments, the electric, engineering, and water divisions. So I, th I think it's going to be a good thing for Batavia and should save us some money on some manpower. Rahat, you want to? No, and and it's not for only for public works. I mean, I right. we did... We forgot to write that it's the city's drone. So any department, you know, community development and our public safety, public, public safety <clears throat> anybody can borrow it. We'll, we'll keep it, we'll, we'll find a place and keep it charged all the time. The, the most troubling thing is the keeping it um, charged fully so that you can you get the full 30 minutes to an hour of flying out of it. 
but you guys have seen probably photos uh, that um, Trotter and Associates present to us, you know, on monthly meetings for the water treatment plant or wastewater treatment plant. They use the drone to take those pictures. We have taken pictures of the dam using drone. So we, you know, and, and I was joking with uh, Gary a little bit, chicken or egg type of deal, you know, which one comes first. I think we'll, we'll really find a lot of use of this. Um, and and uh, as you said, public safety is, is our fire and, you know, even police, they can, they can use it, you know. And not only is it um, efficient in terms of saving on labor costs, but it also pre prevents us from having to put a, a person in a precarious position where they might be injured if we can send the drone um, to go up mm -hmm. and inspect mm -hmm. things that are at the top of, you know, say an, uh, an electric pole mm -hmm. or um, the water tower. It just really is going to be so helpful to us. Yeah, so it would be great. Do, yeah. Who's authorized to fly this? Uh, in our in our office, Danielle O'Neill and uh, Moose both are authorized. They have the license. Okay. Okay. But I don't think Moose flies flies flied anything so far. Danielle is the one who who has mostly done it. So. And I believe that Todd Davis also Todd has Davis. a certification yeah. to okay. fly drones. Yeah, because I know that that's one thing that we'll have to make sure of because at certain oh, sure. heights and certain things you have to have certification. Yeah, they, they are certified. It. Yes. Right. Right. So that way that that's legal, and where we use it. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful with it. Right. Yes, I think this is a good thing for the oh, city. Yeah. Are we okay with the one quote? Because I understand that there's not a lot of people, a lot of organizations out there that do this. There are a few, but um, seller, we, we purchased our serving equipment from them. We get those um, uh, calibrated every year from them. So we find them to be pretty good um, pretty good company that, that provides, you know, this type of service. And we are happy with them, so that's why we didn't go other places. And it's kind of comparable. We, we looked at prices online, and it seems comparable. They, they included one year of maintenance with that, so if anything happens, they will cover the, cover the maintenance or, or for, for this equipment. Now you, you mentioned that you have like a 30-minute fly time on it. Do you have multiple batteries for it, so that way you can run it up for 20 minutes, bring it back, throw another battery in it, and run it back up if you need to use it again? So battery itself, I, and I realized that we didn't include that cost in here. Battery itself is $1,400. Uh, for one battery, is 700 So we are okay. buying two batteries. You're going to have two. Okay. That's, that's all I wanted to know is that way you don't get on site and you have to, right. you know, stop, go back and charge the thing, and then come back and finish your job. You know, so that way you can complete what you're wanting to right. do. Yeah, this, this code has two batteries in it. Okay. Yeah, and I think I'm fine if it's a company that you're used to dealing with, with regular equipment that you use every day, and they have good service, and they're there when you need them to be. Right. I think that's a good And good I believe they're in uh, Wheaton uh, or somewhere in that area okay. that we can just 15 minutes ride, we can take it to them, and they service it, and then we just bring it back. So, so it looks like even with the batteries, it's still $7,500 on their budget. Mm -hmm. Yes. Any other discussion? No. Just a quick question. What's the make and model? Um, I can give you this page. I printed it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. We'll have to take a field trip, Mark, and go see yeah. if we can use it. <laughs> <laughs> or at least so we can see it. We can see if it how it operates. Yeah. My son's certified. So yeah. He was at one point. The drone and I have is small enough I doesn't have to be certified. And this one is flexible. Um, they initially, we wanted to get a one with survey equipment so you could fly it and get the topography mm -hmm. and all that. But then we thought maybe, you know, we don't have a lot of use for it yet. So we are buying one where you can, later on, you can go and buy that lens, which mm -hmm. you can just change. If we see the need that, you know, that's going to okay. save us money. That, that was like about $10,000 more. So we said, no, we don't want that. We just want something with that can take pictures and, and help us with that. I like mine for looking at the gutter so I don't yeah. have to go up a ladder to look at them. Anyone else? 
Okay, and I would like to make a motion to move to City Council Resolution 2242R, authorizing the purchase of a drone from Sealer Design Solutions in the amount not to exceed $20,908. Second. Motion made by Rosado, second by Miller. Roll call. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Connolly? Aye. Chanson? Sofa? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Barron? Aye. Lehman? Aye. Ayazi? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Zerone? Vogelsinger? Aye. Ann Miller? Aye. Motion carried 11 to 0. All right, thank you. Um, up next is uh, Resolution 22-46-R, Acceptance of Public Sidewalk, Water Main, and Sanitary Sewer System, and authorize the City Engineer to release a letter of credit for public improvements at 2401 Hawks Drive, also known as Windmill Landings. Yep. Alderman Rosado. Yes. Everything is completed on this project with the maintenance period ended. The letter of credit is no longer needed. We just need to accept the public improvements and authorize Rahat to release the maintenance letter of credit. I mean, you have I seen so. similar yeah. things I, I'm bringing in to you on a regular basis. So uh, typically they reduce the, their uh, initial letter of credit to 25% and we hold that for a year as a maintenance period. And then once the maintenance period is over, I bring it to you to accept the public improvements and release the letter of credit. So, any questions? Any discussion, questions? Pretty simple. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to move to City Council Resolution 2246R, acceptance of public sidewalk, water main, and sanitary sewer system, and authorize the city engineer to release the letter of credit for public improvements at 2401 Hawks Drive, AKA Windmill Landings. Second. Motion by Rosado, second by Miller. Roll call. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Connolly? Aye. Chanson? Sofa? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Barron? Aye. Neiman? Aye. Ayazi? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Cerrone? Vogelsinger? Aye. Ann Miller? Aye. Motion carried 11 to 0. Thank you so All much. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Rahat. All right. Um, up next is Resolution 22-45-R, authorizing execution of an intergovernmental agreement with Batavia Township and Countryside Fire Protection District for fire protection services. And this is for what, four years? Yes. Correct, this mm -hmm. contract? Starting out at $250,000 and ending at two sixty two dollars over the years 22, 23, 24, and 25. And this is an increase over the current amount that they pay of $245,000 per year. Anybody have any questions? You know, I think this is another one of those consolidation things that at some point we might talk about consolidating and getting rid of the fire protection district and have it be part of the city. I guess we have to look at those maps again, but every once in a while the word consolidation pops up and that's one of those things I think that could go away, along with the township, but that gets me in trouble when I say that. <laughs> but I still say it. So is that, nobody has any questions? Anybody online? Yeah, I'll make the motion that uh, we recommend to Council Resolution 22-45-R, authorizing execution of an intergovernmental agreement with Batavia Township and Countryside Fire Protection District for fire protection services. Second. Um, motion by Wolf, second by Miller. Roll call, please. Wolf? Aye. Barron? Aye. Lehman? Aye. Ayazi? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Cerrone? Vogel Singer? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? 
Connolly? Aye. Chancet? And Solta? Aye. Motion carried 11 to 0. All right, thank you. Next is item 14, uh, Ordinance 22-16, establishing an administrative PSEBA process. All right. All right, here's what we need to make our evening long. Not. <laughs> this will be easy tonight, right? That's right. <laughs> so, um, PSEBA, which is Public Safety Employee Benefits Act, was established actually back in, the state of Illinois established it back in 1997. The purpose of the PSEBA Act is to provide um, insurance benefits to a firefighter or police officer who has suffered a catastrophic injury or is killed in the line of duty. The employer, the guidelines is the employer must pay the entire premium of the health insurance benefit to the employee, their spouse, and their dependent children. And in order to qualify for this benefit, the employee must have been injured or killed as a result of the officer's response to fresh pursuit, the officer or firefighter's response to what is re reasonably believed to be an emergency, an unlawful act per perpetrated by another, or during the investigation of a criminal act. So PSEBA is, in general, one of the most costliest unfunded mon mandates to go into play. Um, with family ins health insurance costing uh, in excess of $33,000 a year. So as you can, and factoring the pace of health care, as you can imagine, that can be very expensive to um, any uh, government body. So um, currently right now, um, the city currently has five current active placebo claims, um, dating all the way back to 2004. And currently the annual cost for placebo for us to the city is $140,040. Since 2004, we've actually paid one point, over $1.7 million in um, health insurance claim cost uh, and premiums to uh, placebo applicants. Um, I won't necessarily get into a lot of the legal language unless you wanna talk more about it, but the um, over the years since 1997, um, really where placebo has um, become such a critical and important process in reviewing is that over time they have there's been a, a question of a def, what is the definition of catastrophic injury mean as well as where is the connection between um, things such as a pension pension line of, line of duty disability um, what does it mean in in fresh pursuit in um, emergency so all of those things have been tried and continue to be tried with that being said um, there has been, as time has gone on, there's been some recommendations for as a city in order to be able to um, hopefully help administer and control some of the placebo costs is for us to get out in front of it. Um, there, when it comes to line of duty, um, disability pensions, things, uh, workers' comp injuries, all of those things, those really many times are out of our control in regards to the decisions made. But once those decisions are made, those decisions can be connected directly to placebo and could potentially um, tie us to a decision being made. So with that being said, um, it's, def it's recommended that we establish a placebo um, application process and how that would work should someone need to apply for placebo. Um, the benefits of that is, of course, to ensure there's a consistent and fair process in determining placebo el eligibility and also um, ensuring that all public safety officers employed by the city understand what their benefits are and what's entitled to them and what the process is. Um, and then also hopefully reduce potential of inappropriate city expenditures for applicants that are not entitled to this benefit. By getting in front of that, being prepared, having the application in front of us, and being able to review that ahead of time. Um, up until this point with the placebo claims, and it's nothing that the city has necessarily done wrong, but what we have kind of done has been a wait and see. So somebody gets injured, they go out and they go, and then once they complete the line of duty, they then come back to us and say, hey, I think I'm entitled to placebo. And then we start this, um, it's been a very, when I first started, uh, they, we didn't have an application, I created an application, they would fill out an application, I would send it to our attorney, and they would say, yes, you need to give it to them or, or not. So with that being said, by establishing a process, it definitely helps um, understanding and making sure we're fair and consistent with these claims and also hopefully <coughs> 
getting out in front of them to understand our uh, liability. Of course, placebo, that is not saying that placebo is the reason for that is exactly that. For someone in, in a public safety position that is injured or, heaven forbid, killed in the line of duty that their family and they are taken care of. And that's not something the city wishes to stop or, or take away from them, but we just need to also, as you can imagine, with the cost of health insurance, make sure we're doing the process correctly. Um, so with that being said, what um, is attached to the memorandum is a placebo application process. And what that does is um, it uh, names the human resource director as the administrator of the process, which is would be collecting the forms, getting all the information, making sure we have everything um, that we need. And then the mayor would actually appoint a hearing officer. There's guidelines within the ordinance listed as to who that person would be. They would have a legal background, understanding of it. Um, we, that would be determined at the time of need of who that person would, would be, and then a hearing would be held. And we would go through that process and then make a determination. So um, with that being said, um, the other piece of it that also I think is very um, positive that through legislation that we've kind of found out over time is that um, annually um, we can have our placebo applicants um, complete a verification of knowing whether or not they have access to other health insurance. Um, there's some potential cost savings benefits through something along those lines. So we would like to, if at all possible, um, start that process and have our placebo applicants review that. They would need to let us know if they have access to health insurance and possibly could there be a cost savings by the city paying their insurance versus paying the insurance that we have. So there's some, also that that's the other part of the placebo process that hopefully will be beneficial to the city and help do some cost savings. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Anybody online have any questions? Tony, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Alan. Uh, Wendy, just uh, one quick question. Uh, are the, does this cover, would, would this cover uh, um, the employees of Tri-City Ambulance? Um, no, it does not. Is there any coverage for them? through Tri-City or are they just not eligible for it? Unfortunately, they're not covered. Yeah, it would be, they, okay. yeah, the, the law applies to those that are through a local government entity or municipality, so. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think it's good that we have a policy that's there and, you know, an application, everything that's very going to be very consistent because I think that could be more of a problem for us if we didn't have that because then it kind of just is a random process that somebody's going through and that doesn't help anybody. Well, and thankfully, we don't encounter this that right. often, <laughs> but you know, in seven years, this is we're encountering one now, so it's been um, twice since I've been here, um, and so. Obviously, it's not very often, thankfully, mm -hmm. and thankfully, it's even less than that. But at the same time, by having a process, we ensure that we're handling it consistently um, every time. See, Tom, you have your hand up. Go ahead. Yep. Um, I would just say that I think for something like this, it will be very important to make sure that uh, the employees are aware of, of the process that we put in place and we provide, you know, education or the proper documents to them to, to make sure that they know exactly what steps they need to follow in, in order to receive these benefits if they're entitled. Absolutely. Okay. Um, if there are no other uh, comments, questions. I make the motion that we recommend to council ordinance 22-16 um, establishing an administrative PSEBA process. Second. Motion by Wolf, second by Miller. Roll call please. Wolf. Aye. Barron. Aye. Lima. Aye. Ayazi. Aye. Malay. Aye. Ewer? Aye. Tyrone? Vogelsinger? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Connolly? Aye. Chanted? And Sofa? Aye. Motion carried 11 to 0. All right. Thank you. Okay. Up next is item 15, project status. 
Thank you. Um, uh, first and foremost, in case people weren't listening last night, I want to let everyone know that the city has filled the position of communications manager. The position has been offered to and accepted by uh, Lori Botterman. She is a resident of the city of Batavia since 2003, extremely active in the community, volunteering for United Way, serving on the board at Water Street Studios, was an, a, a member of the inaugural committee to create the Batavia's Farm to Table uh, dinner event. Uh, she has extensive background in communications, which includes uh, experience in media and government. She began her career as a newspaper reporter and editor and held uh, writing and senior editing roles at the uh, Northwest Herald, the Daily Herald, and also the Chicago Tribune. And more recently, she's held marketing and communications positions at Northern Illinois University and University of Illinois and at Chicago. So uh, she has, in both of those roles, ha had very similar responsibilities to those that we would expect her to carry out in the position for the city of Batavia. Uh, in addition to that, uh, again, you know, she's lived here for almost 20 years, and she is also the wife of a former alderman, Kevin Botterman. And so we will look forward to her joining staff beginning tomorrow. Um, also, we have uh, conducted second round of interviews for the electric engineer position for the electric utility. And the HR specialist has conducted engineering intern interviews with the public works staff. Um, in community and economic development, we have just a ton of projects that are at various stages of development. Um, with regard to the Starbucks in Chipotle, we're ready to issue them their interior finish out permits. I, people can see the, the walls going up as they drive down Randall Road. We also have a, a spec building at 1252 Pearson Drive, which I guess you can't really say it's spec anymore because they found themselves a tenant, um, which is really great. At as these buildings are being built, the, the last remaining parcels in our industrial park, um, not only are buildings getting built, but buildings are getting filled with um, permanent tenants as well. The, everyone's excited to hear about our newest uh, craft brewery in, a, in the downtown area, Sturdy Shelter Brewing. They have received their interior, uh, they've received their building permit and um, interior build out has begun. So uh, we hope that sometime later this year that we'll all be enjoying um, a nice craft beer and they are building a patio to go out over uh, with a lookout over the river, which I think will be a really nice addition to our downtown. Um, and then also in public works, formal submittal has been made to IDOT for the permit to remove the pedestrian crossing at Batavia Avenue and McKee Street. And the annual sidewalk repair and road resurfacing programs are ready for bidding by April. We'll be doing the sidewalk construction projected, is projected to happen in June and July. And then the resurfacing is scheduled for August and September. And I always like to take the opportunity to uh, notify people if they're not aware um, on the city's homepage, scroll down to the bottom, there's something called city maps. And if you go there, uh, you can answer the question, you know, is my sidewalk or uh, is my street on the uh, sidewalk or street program for 2022 or otherwise contact us and we'll be happy to uh, let you know that. Um, that's all I have unless anybody has any questions for me. Alderman Muir. Yeah, when you mentioned the street program, it reminded me is NICOR going to fix our crosswalks from when they tore them up and we were going to have the, the faux brick put down again? I'll be happy to check on that and get back to you. Oh, Rahat has more information on that? So, so NICOR wrote us a check and Paul Haynes is going to lead the effort to replace all of them. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Rahat. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody online have any questions? Anybody else have any others? So we want to make a motion for adjournment so we can get out before 745. <laughs> so moved. Second. second. Motion and second for adjournment. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Did it. See, I, I told you it was going to be short.